Peace, Chiefs, and Dears, it's Bronze Bird here with another video. Before I begin, like and subscribe. Thank you. So today's video, I'm going to title Pro Liberal Blacks. I believe this is part four in which I say the so-called black man must concede. And there's two particular public figures by the name of DaBaby and Lil Boozy, who's going to become the featured guest of this conversation in which I want to extend the idea of this random topics of conversations going around, in which I'll try to hit it from a perspective that may seem uh, uh, 2D, 2D or 3D if you're paying attention about what's really going on with the issue of baby making that um, inflammatory comment at the Rolling Loud Festival that recently just happened last week and Lil Boozy taking on the role of trying to become this internet revolutionary as a so-called black man on the internet, which got him his Instagram account blocked, deleted, or whatever. And then he goes on this emotional tirade of talking about how he needs it back and all these different things like that. So I'll expand on it once I uh, go further into this in-depth uh, conversation about this video. But to give you a heads up, my whole entire thing about the, the baby situation, a lot of people, and especially because you had people like T.I. <laughs> who wanted to come in expeditiously, come into this conversation and talking about how if the LGBTQ community should be able to talk, then the baby should be able to talk, basically. That's just, I'm giving a, a different wording of what he said, but to the odds of that, it's parallel to what he said. And my whole entire thing is what's happening with the baby is, is an obvious shaming ritual. There's no other way of putting it. I don't understand why people think that this is supposed to just be the baby just going to all these different things because ironically you find it that there's a lot of people, there's a lot of these entertainers in the industry like Elton John, uh, Madonna, a couple of other people who's been in the craft for a very long time you could probably relate them to being Luciferians and all these different things, but they're known in the industry. And so what happened with the baby, they come out and they say, you're wrong for speaking against the LGBTQ community and talking about HIV and AIDS and all this other stuff. It's a mere game that they're playing right now. And the baby is gonna come forward and say some nonsense like the devil can't take my soul or my soul can't be taken. This is just, uh, Sometimes I feel like this is just a, a regular way of usually saying, I will not compromise to your forms as a music artist, which is usually a lot of the times when they get into a big quarrel or bicker on certain conversations, they usually go to uh, my soul can't be taken. But when you ever sign a contract and you agree to be in the limelight for so long, your soul has already been taken. There's been so many documentaries, uh, YouTube videos on this and such and such where people really talk in depth on how someone can sell their soul. So the baby usually makes this plight of esoterically trying to say he doesn't want to bend down and be subservient and concede to the issues at hand and which they're given a lot of hell for, which is the reason they're starting to bring up his murder case and all these different things out here in order for him to recognize, know your place in the game, Negro. So, I'm gonna read a couple of articles and then I'm gonna get into the conversation about Lil Boozy and his fake internet revolutionary self out here trying to have this conversation, <laughs> trying to, you know, be an aid to the baby's comments and talk about how he should be able to express his mind as an individual and say what he has to say for good or for worse. So I'm gonna share my screen. That's not the first video I'm gonna come up with, but this is, this is what's going on. So just to give a background story about what's going on with the baby, I'm just gonna read this article so we can give an understanding about what happened. And uh, shout out to GQ. How the baby's homophobic comments at Rolling Loud set off a firestorm. The rapper's remarks during his performance last weekend are still reverberating. Shout outs to Grant Render, Ridner. Sorry, the baby has dubbed himself the live show killer, and he's certainly gotten folks around the world talking about his recent set at Rolling Loud. During the performance, the Charlotte rapper born Jonathan Kirk not only brought 
controversial artist Tory Lanez on stage, but made some truly bizarre and offensive comments about queer people, as well as those living with HIV and AIDS. And before I continue, a lot of people like to bring up this plight about how the LGBTQ community in particular seems to be this uh, mafia over the media in which you can or which you cannot say things. And then they try to get into these conversations that now the LGBTQ community runs the industry, but they've always have. It's just that now what you're understanding in this paradigm shift in 2021, it starts to become overt instead of covert. And a lot of people just think that, oh, the LGBTQ, the LGBTQ. No, it's not about that. If you've been listening to my YouTube channel for a while, I've always said the LGBTQ community is just one force when it comes to the upper echelon of society bringing out their agendas. That's why so many people just talk about LGBTQ community like they sound smart, but they don't have a dig in and an understanding that there's more that comes to this program than what meets the eyes. Socialization, re-socialization that requires different things that would be considered taboo as now not taboo and actually normalized. Same thing that happened with, um, you know, women. The same thing that happened with uh, feminism and all these different things out here. LGBTQ is just one of the factors out here. But I don't think people should understand that the LGBTQ is the end all be all for the new socialization concept that they're trying to put into society. So I need people to understand that. If you didn't show up today with HIV slash AIDS or any of them deadly sexually transmitted diseases that'll make you die in two or two, three weeks, then put your cell phones light in the air. He said, ladies, if your pussy smells like water, put a cell phone light in the air. Fellas, if you ain't a suck a di dick in the parking lot, put your cell phone lights in the air. Keep it fucking real. Though much of the initial scrutiny of the baby's set centered around Lanes, whom Megan Thee Stallion accused of shooting her last year in a pub and widely publicized incident, this course in the ensuing days has focused on Kirk's homophobic comments. His initial response came in the form of a video on Instagram where he criticized people commenting on a concert that they did not themselves attend. What me and my fans do at the live show, it doesn't concern you ingers on the internet and you bitter bitches on the internet, he said. Before sharing a story about enjoying the energy of a crowd, of a fan in the crowd who he thought may have been gay, ostensibly sensibly to refute critics. All right. Eventually, Kirk offered something more in the realm of a traditional celebrity apology and a string of tweets. He admitted that his remarks about sexually transmitted diseases were insensitive while also criticizing brands and companies that profit off black rappers, influence on the culture and hyping up his upcoming show tour dates, excuse me. Anybody who done ever been affected by age slash HIV Y'all got the right to be upset. What I said was insensitive, even though I had no intentions of offending anybody. So my apologies, he wrote, though not without a cryptic follow-up, but the LGBT com community, I ain't tripping on y'all, do you. Y'all business is y'all business. And this is all just gonna be conversations about, you know, his, you know, they're talking about his other controversies and this, that, and third. I'm not, I'm not making a video for this. He, they're mentioning about Lil Nas X, which is going to be a separate video I'm going to do. And I can throw an article out there in case anybody wants to read the whole entire thing. But the whole entire thing about this was, this was a shaming ritual for him to know his place. You don't talk about certain things out here, whether they're pushing an agenda or not, because you will be scrutinized heavily. So that's what happened with the baby and what it was, what it took for him was to actually concede, which is the reason why he had to come out with the tweets or apologize on Instagram in order to make that clear. If people pay attention, we all know the ins and outs about what happens about these usual situations when they make some comments after out of turn. It's the same thing that happened with 
Nick Cannon last year when he made the comments about Jews and about who's the real Jews and all these different things, becoming all these internet revolutions and getting excited because they read these books or they hear from these certain master teachers and all out there and they talk about so-called black people. Let me explain something on that as well. These celebrities out here, whether you believe it or not, are not for the interests of so-called black people. So I don't understand why people think that these celebrities, just because they talk a good game, and because they say something for the culture, it means something. First of all, the baby is a pookie, okay? I don't understand why, why niggas don't understand that shit. The baby is a pookie. He doesn't rap about shit. He's been programmed to be in the rap industry. And honestly, I also want to bring this up into fruition. I also want to talk about this about how the baby is illustrating the concept of the confused so-called black man, in my opinion. The so-called black man who can seem like a child, esoterically speaking like a child or seeming like a child, while also bringing out the rough, aggressive exterior of the so-called black man's image. That's what I have to say on that about the baby, because it seems a little weird that a, a grown ass man that names himself as a rapper, the baby, goes ahead and can go ahead in a ritual and wear something like baby diapers while also talking about gang violence and talking about fucking on your bitch. So I just want to give you this article really quickly from CNN. I don't want to take a lot of time with this, but just to show you a little bit written by a so-called black woman, of course, from CNN. <laughs> Gotta do it. The baby comments spark backlash from Elton John, Madonna, and other celebs. And these are the type of people that will put him in his place. And that's exactly what I mean. Quest Love is another one. But, you know, Quest Love is more, you know, liberals. You understand? Liberals. So I want you to understand that. When a plight is against a so-called black man who understands the bullshit of this society and wants to speak against it, you will be leveled down by a lot of critics. But you will have a harder time when you are a public figure. So, Elton John, Madonna, Questlove, and others have come out to condemn the rapper's comments last weekend at the Rolling Loud Music Festival in Miami. During the performance, he made false and insulting comments about gay men and HIV and spoke crudely about women as well. John, who is gay and a longtime HIV activist, took to Twitter to say, we've been shocked to read about the HIV misinformation and homophobic statements made at a recent The Baby Show. I ain't saying the same thing. This fuels stigma and discrimination and is the opposite of what our world needs to fight the AIDS epidemic. He tweeted before offering up some factual data about HIV. Homophobic and HIV mistruths have no place in our society or industry and as musicians, we must spread compassion and love for the most marginalized people in our communities. A musician's job is to bring people together. Allegedly, you say that. Madonna also shared her message to the baby on social media, posting a video of his remarks on her Instagram account and writing, if you're going to make hateful remarks to the LGBTQ community about HIV slash AIDS, then know your facts. After decades of hard, Part of one scientific research, there are now life-saving medicines available to children born with HIV, to people who have contracted HIV through blood transfusions, dirty needles, and exchange of bodily flu fluids. She wrote, these new ARVs can keep a person with AIDS alive for the rest of their lives. AIDS is not transmitted by standing next to someone in a crowd. Whoever said that? No, no one ever said that. Bitches is delusional. Demi Lovato, who recently went public that they are non-binary, shared a post from makeup artist and activist Matt Bernstein about the danger of the baby's comments on their Instagram account. Singer Dua Lipa, who collaborated with the rapper on a remix of her song, Levitating, said in a statement on her Instagram stories Tuesday that she was surprised and horrified by, at the baby's comments. Now, I need people to understand this. A lot of the times, words mean something, word spells, okay? I need people to understand this. When they say surprise and horrified, or they say things like dangerous and all these different things, cryptically, they're trying to make the baby 
a so-called black rapper, make it seem like he's a predator. And I know a lot of people don't understand it from that point, and I'm not just gonna relate it to the fact that he's so-called black, but it seems as if when they drop these words and they use certain words to relate uh, an insensitive comment or just comments that seems like a fire starter, they automatically have to use words to demean that person. So I just want people to be very aware of that. I really don't recognize this as a, as a person I work with. I know my fans know where my heart lies and that I stand 100% with the LGBTQ community. She wrote, we need to come together and fight the stigma and ignorance around HIV slash AIDS. Musician, producer, and filmmaker Questlove posted on Instagram an upgrade, updated dream list of whom he would have played an updated Summer of Soul Festival with the baby's name scratched off the list. Somebody gotta say it. Homophobia slash transphobia, xenophobia, misogyny slash racism. This should go without saying is morally wrong, Questlove wrote. But at least one celeb has spoken out on behalf of the rapper. Okay, and that's what being said. If you're gonna have the Lil Nas X video and him living his truth, you're gonna damn sure have people like the baby who are gonna speak their truth. Fellow T.I. said on Instagram about rapper Lil Nas X being openly gay. Ain't nothing wrong with none of it. It ain't got to be no hate. It's all honesty. Everybody living the, in their truth. And before I continue, you know, like I said before, you get a lot of these internet revolutionaries. I, I need, I need so-called black people to understand that a majority of these celebrities are not working for you on your behalf. They're programmed to give you more of a knee jerk, more of like a, a mental masturbation into your mind to think that they want to cause for a revolution. None of them is about revolution. Not T.I., not those people at Fox Soul, uh, not Lil Boozy, who I'm going to get to in a second. None of these celebrities that y'all swear is going to be for you. It's not. It's all just a acting scene. It's a script to protect a so-called black man when he says something out of order in order to understand when he's speaking against the industry or individuals in the industry. These people out here is getting paid millions of dollars and get paid all out this money from these shows and these podcasts nowadays to speak all that bullshit and all that stuff about helping the so-called black community. Black man, please understand who's in your court and who's with you and who's not with you. Even the people you believe is on your team is not on your team, whether they be on YouTube or not. They're sent out there. These are paid agents. Moving on. And so, you know, you have TI right here, but I mean, look, I, don't, I think I'll just put this article in the back and stuff like that. This is not really an important article. I wanna get to the little boozy part. And so what you have right here is that Lil Boozy also made some comments about the whole entire fiasco that happened from the baby, and how I usually call him another one of these internet revolutionaries. And I think I believe Lil Boozy is a pookie as well. I know I like to use the, the term pookie to relate to these so-called black men, but they fit the profile for one. And just the fact of the matter that you have a lot of these, I know I'm using it as a slur, but just so you have the understanding, a lot of these dudes just want to protect so-called black men, that is, even if that means there's dudes that's really doing degenerate behavior. And I'm actually surprised Lil Boozy complained like a bitch once his Instagram account got deleted because he's talking about it's going to feed us. He's feeding his family when he does ratchet stuff on that online as well. So anyway, I'm going to play the video and then I'll make my commentary along the way. So Pete. Bitch, go get fucked on TV, nigga. Put a paw on out, bitch. That's what they gay shit, man. Everybody not with it. It's, it's, not, it's, it's, not a, it's not cool for everybody. You can't make the whole everybody not on that gay shit. Everybody don't want to get fucked in their ass. Everybody don't want to suck another nigga dick. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody not with that shit, you know? 
This motherfucker said he want to perform naked for charity. But fuck, we're going to suck a dick on live, nigga. You fucked in your ass with all other gay rappers on live, nigga. Hey, all I know is that little Boozy loves to, like, it sounds like this brother is always sitting up there mumbling. Besides mumble rap, this brother is always mumbling. And let me, let me say this about so-called black people and how I find it a hypocrite when we talk about the LGBTQ community. Now, you see how Lil Boozy can say all of these different things about a so-called black man or gay people in general, right? But then you also have the hood dudes or whatever you want to call it, that co-sign, uh, Butch, AG, or so-called dykes and these different things in the masculine behavior of these women that want to emulate a man. So why is it the fact of the matter there's more flack for the so-called black man who is gay, therefore ignoring the actual butch, the one that wants to emulate you or probably replace you, allegedly? What? Nigga, nigga, you want to turn out like, you want to get naked in front of kids, nigga? Go suck a dick on live, nigga. <laughs> Trying to fuck with the baby on that, nigga. Look, I ain't the baby. Everybody ain't with that gay ass shit in the world, bro. All right, enough. We're going to get to the video about where he starts crying like a bitch about losing his Instagram uh, account. And that's the reason, centered around the reasons why he got his Instagram account stuff blocked and stuff like that. That's why I say... A lot of these brothers talk all that hot shit, but then when it starts to become really serious about their money or about their industry or their careers, they start to have to concede. And you know, the upper echelons know this. They, they usually always know that a Negro was gonna shut the hell up when it comes to his money because he has to quote unquote feed his family. And this is what happens with Boozy Badass now. He's trying to go ahead and plead for his Instagram back just based off of the fact that matter he made all these hot ass comments and trying to agree with the baby and be all, you know, all loud and boisterous and loud about his, his opinion on the Lil Nas X. But let's just see what he's going to talk about. And I'll give my viewpoint on it as the video plays. They just took my Instagram. Marge Zuckerberg, <laughs> I need to talk to you. Bosses need to talk to boss. I don't know what I did, but I need my Instagram back. Please, baby, 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 please, baby, 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 please. Please, Mr. Zuckerberg. I don't even know what I did. <laughs> but this is how I feed my family. Mark, do not do this to 2020. Do not take boots out of Instagram. We need to talk, Mark. You need to take... Oh, my apologies. But this was something... This is from 2020. But he did have a, another video talking about how he needs to have his Instagram back. And it was a whole entire complaint on that and things like that. But um, let, let me play the video still. It, it's still going to be relative to the topic of conversation. Give me the orientation or something, but you can't put me out of school. This is how I feed my family. We ain't making no show money, Mark Zuckerberg, none of the rappers. I need my Instagram back, man. Mark, I need my Instagram back. Mark Zuckerberg. I told everybody, call Mark Zuckerberg at him right now. Tell him, call my assistant. We need to talk. I need my Instagram. I got people money I got to post. They just took my Instagram. Mark Zuckerberg, I need to talk to you. There you have it, folks. The whole entire conversation, even though that's a video from last year, there was an all there also was an uprising about Lil Boozy himself losing his Instagram off of the conversation about Lil Nas X, if I'm not mistaken. But this goes into my conversation as well. Lil Boozy extends this whole entire thing about how he shouldn't lose his Instagram when he makes these inflammatory comments towards people like Lil Nas X and about the LGBTQ community. Now, my thing about it is this plain and simple. Lil Nas X just exploited the whole entire thing that happens in the music industry and in which what happens with a lot of rappers, even though they're trying to change the whole entire thing with payola and figuring out different ways and streams of income so that a rapper or a musician can earn more money than just let alone CD sales in which CDs are obsolete at this moment. Everything is streams. So of course now you have on YouTube about how you can get a copyright strike 
for playing somebody else's music and about how they're trying to configure a whole entire system on how a musician can get paid on YouTube since their songs is being streamed. So with that being said, the internet revolutionaries never win, especially when you're a so-called black man, Lil Boozy being a prime example, speaking on the behalf of the baby. And the thing about it is with brothers like that, what the hell is he talking about when it comes to feeding my family? When he can go on Instagram and play this whole entire into this, this internet revolutionary role, like I always say, and what he does, he, what does he post on Instagram? Talking a lot of shit, watching fellow women twerk, online and all these different things out here and this is just a story that i just want to you kind of expose so that people can understand that the so-called black men will concede under pressure and which you'll see especially with someone like the baby in which he could be threatened behind closed doors because of his comments and a lot more things can happen to him at the odds and that this was all just a shaming ritual on his behalf and probably another shaming ritual on Lil Boozy's behalf. So I need people to just be aware about your around surroundings and your environment, especially when things like this happen. Just don't be surprised when they do things like this. Don't be surprised when they come up with these, uh, you know, banal statements of saying, I don't want to sell my soul, I don't sell my soul, and just certain things out there they're trying to bring up to make it seem as if they're trying to be a rebel against the system, a rebel against the industry. All of that shit is fake, okay? All of it is just some bullshit that they say just to say things because they want to act as if the industry is against them when they go ahead and they sign their life away for the industry. This is all just a shaming ritual, like I said. Peace.